Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the River Cats Dynasty as we come into this game ranked in the top 10 for the first time here in this series. Now, this is the last game of the season, and really the last game that these seniors will play in the regular season ever. So we will honor them and give them the start in the first half. We are playing a two-win Tulsa State team, so I'm not really too worried about losing or anything like that. Obviously, I want to win. If we start to lose, I'll start to put my starters in, but I wanna give the seniors just a chance. Now, I'm gonna miss a lot of these guys, I'm gonna give Connor Kangas, a guy that you've never probably seen. He has one sack in his career. He's been here ever since the inception of this series, to be honest. Toffee Brown is actually moving on next year as well. So he will get the start. He's actually graduating a year early. He's actually been in the program for four years. He's a redshirt junior, but he has graduated academically and will move on with his life after football. So let's get into this game here on the road versus Tulsa State. They are struggling here in the SEC in their first year. Obviously, they're kind of rebuilding. And here is Joseph Swain, who we've seen for the last few years. He gets the first carry, Osiris Hovick, on the tackle. So here is Edwards, their quarterback, trying to throw a screen pass. And he is sacked. That's Connor Kangas. So in on senior day, I guess it's not really senior day because we're on the road, but he gets a sack in his final game. This is his first career start, by the way, and he gets a sack. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for all these seniors. And out comes Jabari Blaze Jr. at running back. He is a senior as well. He gets the first carry as Gunnar Johnson, another senior, gives it to him, and he picks up four yards. Now, Gunnar Johnson is not the starting quarterback anymore, Jamal Wilson. That, that page has been turned. Here's a throw to the left side. Chris Whiteside's got it inbounds, gain of 12. And like I said, Jamal Wilson, I think, is a starter going into the bowl game. And we'll see who we play coming up after this game. But I want to see what Gunnar Johnson can do. This is his final game as a senior. Might as well give him the start. Gonzalvo, the other senior, gets the first down as we get to about the 30-yard line. Rolling out to the right side, Gunnar Johnson buying time, throwing. He's got Ethan Andrews with some room, and that's a gain of 10. Ethan Andrews will probably be the starter next year at tight end, finally at that number one spot in uh, at the tight end on the depth chart because next year, Gonzalvo's going to be moving on. He is a senior, and I'll see. I don't know. It's either going to be Klug or Andrews. I like Andrews because of his pass-catching ability. But Clue can block a little better. So here inside the five-yard line, third and goal, quick throw. White side gets to the one-yard line, tackled. He's going to be just short, and we are going to go for this. And Jabari Blaze Jr. checks into the game. We're going to hand off right back to him, and he falls in. Touchdown, one yard out, 7 nothing here for your River Cats. Here is a top-10 team for the first time here in this series. Tulsa State, remember, was already top 10 before. We upset them when they were the number five team in the country, and they have not gotten back to that point since. So here back on offense, here's a throw to the right side, and that's gonna be caught by Coleman, and Odin Blue was in coverage. He's having an All-American season, and that's a gain of six. So they do punt the ball away as we move into the second quarter. Here's a quick throw out to the left side. It's Xavier, it's Xavier Zane Storm. And he picks up 12 yards, first down, spending for a nice gain of 12. So here's Gunnar Johnson now, across the 50, play action fake, moving to the right. Let's see what he does. He throws to the sideline, and he finds his fellow senior, Gonzalvo, gain of 19, first down. And we move the ball inside the five-yard line, as that is going to be Garrett Jones who checks into the game, but a throw across the middle, and Gunnar Johnson just misses Zane Storm. That was a touchdown. And now we get it to a third and goal. We get a second chance now. Johnson moving to left side, but that defensive end is really fast. We can't get around him. And it's a sack, loss of three yards. We will settle for three on that drive as now Tulsa State comes back out on offense. So they're going to hand the ball off to Joseph Swain. He gets to the left side, finds some room, throws to Stiff Arm and Toffee Brown playing in his final, at least final start. He gets the tackle across the 50, first down for Tulsa State. So here's Edwards from the shotgun this time. He's going to try to scramble out, but he does get rid of it. And he finds White. So first and 10 now at about the 25-yard line. This is a counter play. And Odin Blue is in the backfield. Nice tackle on that one. 
And Odin Blue making plays all season long. He gets a big one on that one. And it brings it to a second and long. Quick throw to the right side. Coleman's open. He's got it to about the nine-yard line. And that's a first down here for Coleman. They're inside the 10. So now third and nine this time. Edwards going to move. Throws off his back foot. And he's got White. Touchdown. Tim White in the back of the end zone. What a throw. I mean, look at this. There was a lot of luck involved in that throw, but it was right on the money. And it's now 10 to 7 as we have the three point lead. So, two minutes left here in the first half. Quick throw, and that's Gonzalvo getting down the sideline. They sent the cover zero. They even left the running back wide open out of the backfield. It's a big first down catch and run. So, here's a quick throw once again. Chris Whiteside, man, he is sure handed. You throw it to him anywhere on the field, and he might end up being our leading receiver this season. So Jamal Wilson actually checks in after Gunnar Johnson got the wind knocked out of him. He hands off to Jabari Blaze on a third down, and he loses a yard. And now we're going to be aggressive here. Line up to go for it. Fourth and three. Triple option. We hand off, and Blaze gets it first down. He falls at about the 11-yard line gain of 12, actually. And he's run the ball well here in his last start. So here's Jamal Wilson running it up to the line. He moves to the right side, tries to buy some time, and he scrambles, and he will take it in. Touchdown, 11 yards. Jamal Wilson can hurt you with his legs. That's where he kills you. He can also throw the ball pretty well. He's been doing pretty well throwing the ball. 17-7 going into halftime. Nice lead. So here we go to start the second half. Jamal Wilson and the starters check back in. There is Hollinson who gets the first carry, and he takes it up the middle. A lot of room, Hollinson. He is on a tear. I mean, this kid is, I mean, he's explosive. Look at that run. I mean, all of his runs are always explosive. Here's another one. He hands off the middle, and he runs over a defender and falls forward. Gain of 11. It just seems like he just has these chunk plays. That's what he does. So line up for the middle screen this time. Quick throw to Stephen Ford. Blocking downfield. And he gets tackled at about the 15. He almost broke that one. Gain of 18 for the first down. You can see what our starters are starting to do, man. We're starting to move the ball consistently now that Hollinson is healthy and we can run the ball a little bit. Wilson moves to the right side and tries to throw but gets hit. And it's incomplete. And that one will have us settling for a field goal. The the senior, Kristaps Ivanov, who's been really, really reliable for us in this series, 20 to seven now. So now we're into the third quarter, handoff, Swain. He takes it up the middle, a huge hole. Derek Bamaya can't bring him down, but Brian York can. It's a gain of 20, first down. So now they line up with five wide out there. Let's see what they do. Edwards from the shotgun, he's gonna throw across the middle, open Whitaker, and he gets tackled by Odin Blue, but a gain of 11. A first down for Tulsa State. So now they move it to the 25 this time. We disconnect from Xbox Live. Edwards throws off his back foot again, and it's a great throw. Whitaker, 21 yards. You got to be kidding me. I don't know what's up with this quarterback and throw it off his back foot, but that one was right on the money again. Edwards looks like that's his thing. So here's second and goal. Throw to the right side. Coleman's got it, and he steps out of bounds at about the one, maybe the two-yard line. So third and goal now. It was probably the three-yard line, it looks like, that marked him at. Handoff, Joseph Swain gets swung around. Dominique Edwards stops him at the goal line. Fourth and goal at the one. So they come out here in the goal line formation. They're probably going to hand it off to Joseph Swain. They run the tight end in motion. And look at this, they're going to pass. He throws, picked off, Brian York. Why would they throw the ball? We actually did this a few games ago, right before halftime, and they did it here. And look at that. It's 20 to 7, a pick on the goal line. So here we are back on our offense. It's Joe Bashai getting a catch across the middle. And look at Joe Bashai, man. He is going to be special. I love what he can do. I, I'm glad that we discovered him as a pass catching running back. He can do some damage. So here's a throw across the middle this time. Wilson, he's going to find TC3, but it's only a gain of seven. And now we bring in Gunnar Johnson here for a fourth and one. Maybe throwing off the defense a little bit, but handoff. Bashai gets it. Four-yard carry for the first down, his first carry of the game. J.J. Hollinson doesn't let anybody get any carries, to be honest. He barely comes off of the field. 
So here's a handoff. Hollinson, 10 yards up the middle. And he moves the chains. So now we eventually get it to the nine yard line here. Line up with four wide receivers out there. Third and goal. Wilson throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Gonzalo. In his final game, he gets in for the touchdown. That's what you like to see in his final regular season game, I should say. And the senior has been reliable for us. And that one does do it here in this game. What a season five it's been here. And I love what I saw from this team. We end up top 10 in the nation in the regular season. It has been quite the journey. We did lose some tough games, especially San Diego State earlier versus Davis Lee and that high-powered team. I think they are going to be a powerhouse here. If they do well one more year, I do plan on moving San Diego State up to the Pac-12 because right now they're not there. But I need to see consistency out of that. And then just looking at you know other teams across the conference, Tulsa State truly did struggle. And that's one of the things that, you know, I need to see improvement out of them. I think I'm going to give them one more year in the SEC before demoting them. I don't want to jump the gun, especially since I don't know if there's any teams that really dominated in the MAC where we just came from. M-Stam is still struggling. I know that. But in this game, Holland Sid actually came in and almost ran for 100 yards in the second half. That's incredible. And then looking at everybody else, Brian York had an interception. And then Connor King has got the only sack in the game. Congrats to that senior. I'm glad to see these seniors get some run. So we end this regular season 9-3. and three. We will not be going to the conference championship, obviously. We lost that tough game versus Chance Tyree in Texas A&M. So we will have to kind of sit back and watch them play. We did still have the same conference record, but being in the SEC West, this is a very tough division. Probably the toughest division in any conference. We have Alabama. We have everybody in this conference. And I'm thinking that next year we will probably switch sides. We will The two uh, newcomers on each side will swap. So Missouri Tech and Metropolis move. But look at Metropolis. What happened? They were actually in first place in this division for the longest time. They lost to Georgia, so they lost that head-to-head. -head. But then they lost three of the last four SEC games. Tennessee, Florida, and Missouri Tech. Wow, what a fall-off that was. So they could have ended that conference either 5-1 and one or 6-1. and or What is it? No, it would have had one loss, so 8-1. and one. And then uh, either two losses, they still would have made it. Three losses, they still would have made it probably. So that is incredible. And looking at the MAC conference where we just came from, Louisville and Vanderbilt actually were on top. And Louisville actually comes away with the conference title. They don't have a conference championship because I forgot to add another team in there. But Louisville was the team that actually finished last in the MAC last year. And then they finished first this year. Go figure. So just looking at all Americans here and some of the award winners, the Bednarik is going to Odin Blue, and he almost wins the Nagurski too. I mean, he had a dominant season. He has the NFL on notice for sure, even at 65 overall. I don't believe in how the system, this game does that with the drafts. I think if you are an All-American and an award winner like that, NFL teams are going to be looking at you. There's no doubt. So there is a chance that some of our guys could declare based on just their production. I'm not going to base it off just their overall. But Odin Blue had himself probably the best season out of any player in this series at all because he won the Defensive Player of the Year, almost won two of them, and then is a unanimous first-team All-American. Bryant Britt, All-American returner once again. That is no surprise there. Fernando from Texas A&M, he was the running back for te Texas A&M. I'm surprised Chance Tyree did not make it. That kid was incredible this year, and he was 99 overall. And then just looking at who else made it, Ja'Cory Reed was a second team All-American. I'm proud of that. I I'm glad to see that. He had a good season. Now, all uh, freshman All-American, Zane Storm made it. He had a decent year. We will go over the stats in a little bit. Now, I expected a little bit more out of him. I think his sophomore year will be incredible. I'm, I'm excited for that. Jonathan Thousand makes it as a freshman All-American. I am surprised by this. He had a good season, but it wasn't All-American worthy to me. I think that he is obviously a staple on our team, but I think that he maybe didn't deserve that All-American there. 
But Brenton Jackson, I think, did. He shut down an entire side of the field. He gave up some big plays, but for the most part, he was making some pretty big plays. So let's go over the stats here in Season 5. And surprisingly, we did not actually throw more interceptions than touchdowns with Gunnar Johnson. It seemed like we did for the longest time, but he said 16 and 14. He's going to be missed. I know he was more of a gunslinger quarterback uh, other than uh, Phoenix Frazier the last four years. And Gunner, it was a lot of fun, to be honest. I enjoyed actually slinging the ball around with him. And Jamal Wilson next year, he will have to duke it up out with Dunn Carmichael for the starter uh, at quarterback. But he will be our starter going into this bowl game. I think he had a phenomenal year. He was more of the option option <laughs> quarterback. And I think that this guy is going to be really good. Now, J.J. Hollinson. How, man, if he did not get injured, I wonder if he still would have had the same season. Because it seemed like after that injury, he came back and he was way stronger. I mean, way stronger, way faster, way bigger. He broke more tackles. Seemed just more explosive. I just wonder if he didn't get hurt, would we have rode him like we did? He had 10 touchdowns, so that's actually uh, a pretty good season. I think last year, Deion Carter had 12, so that's not even the uh, school high, or the career high for anybody at our school. So uh, he had a good year. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to him in the bowl game. And looking at everybody else, Jamari Tyson had one touchdown. Zane Storm had two. A couple other guys had two. And not really anybody besides Hollinson had some big yardage. Now, the surprise of this year was Chris Whiteside. I did not expect him to have a season like this where he almost had 1,000 yards and led our team in receptions and yards. Zane Storm led us in touchdowns. I'm not surprised by that. I thought that he would. I thought that his ability to just break open would be a game changer. So he had a good year. Stephen Ford is just Mr. Reliable on the outside. I love what Stephen Ford does. He's the most unselfish player, I think, on this squad. He's never complained, never really uh, wavered from his production. When he gets the ball, he just makes plays. Now, Gonzalo will be missed. Now, in year two of his uh, tenure here, he had a great season, 941 yards, 77 receptions, and he kind of took a step back the next couple years, but it's just that his role changed. It just wasn't that he wasn't as good. Just that he had a different role on the team, and obviously he is going to be missed on that tight end group. Now, Ethan Andrews had a couple of scores. I'm looking forward to him next year. Joe Bashai, he came in and played a couple of games where he had a couple of receptions that really made a difference here with the passing game out of the backfield. And then Klug is pretty good at a tight end. I think he and Andrews are going to have big years next year. Isaiah Thomas had a touchdown. Hollinson actually had a couple. His catching is at like 15, and he had a couple of touchdowns. Pretty good. Now, our offensive line is something I want to talk about. Now, Ryan Mathis actually is a very, very good run blocker. Now, our run game changed because we put him in the lineup, and I am glad that we did it because we actually had a better option at right guard as far as overall, a better pass blocker as well. But he only gave up two sacks. I mean, that is just amazing production, and you just saw the difference in the run game this year. We were able to break away big runs, have big gains, and it was all credit to him. I mean, he was a difference maker on that offensive line. Now, Colton Hollywood is Mr. Consistent as well this season. He was pretty good. But how about the turnaround from Vernon Carter? Here in his senior year, he gave up four sacks. But look at that sophomore year, 17 sacks. His freshman year gave up nine. But then in the next two years, five. I mean, that is just amazing, amazing turnaround. Now, Gordon Figueroa will be missed as well. He was a consistent guard. He helped a lot in the running game. And I'm going to miss a lot of these seniors. We have three senior starters on the offensive line graduating. It's going to be tough. So a guy like Sully Lowenberg is going to have to step up and be the leader on this offensive line. He gave up one sack this year, down from nine a year ago. That is improvement. Now defensively, Odin Blue is a unanimous All-American, a Nagurski winner. He could have took home both Defensive Player of the Year trophies, but he was amazing. NFL teams have him on the radar, so I will not be surprised if he declares. Now, Ja'Cory Reed will be missed. He had his, actually his career high in tackles. I never even noticed that. And he had a couple of big games where he just was all over the field. And I think that he is going to be a guy that I'm going to have to work hard to replace because he did a lot of things. And, you know, he hit the ground running. When he came in as a freshman, he was really good. 
Jake Braun had a good year, and Brian York kind of took a step back, to be honest. I think the expectations were too high on him, especially get, being that captain. He's 6'5", he's a big guy, and I don't think he's going to declare for the NFL. I think he's, as a captain, I think he could stay for his senior year, but you never know. He could declare. Who knows? Now, Brenton Jackson, he had a very good year on the right side of the defense. He had 36 tackles, which you don't want a lot of tackles from your cornerbacks. That means you're just giving up plays to the outside, but... He had a couple of good plays, a couple of big interceptions. He had two on the year, and I think that this guy has a bright future. He's bigger, too, so he can guard bigger receivers and also stay with smaller ones. He's got the speed. Now, Brian Britt did not have the year that I thought he would have. I thought I said I was hoping for 10 interceptions, but is that credit to the quarterbacks not throwing to his side? Because sometimes he did get burnt, but sometimes it was just like money, and he didn't drop too many interceptions, to be honest. Eddie McMack will be missed. He had a great year, four sacks. He's going to be a guy that I'm going to need to replace. Honestly, the playmaking of him was, was the difference between him and any other left outside linebacker like Corey McDaniels. Eddie McMack was just there on every play. Now, J.J. Taylor had five sacks this year, down two from a year ago, but still very, very productive. If you have a defensive tackle that leads your team in sacks, you're doing something right. Now, Osiris Hovick had a good freshman year. Derek Bamaye had a decent sophomore year as the nickel corner. He had one interception. I talked about Corey McDaniels and the difference between him and Eddie McMack. Eddie McMack is just a playmaker. Corey McDaniels can rush the passer a little bit, and that's kind of his calling card. And then looking at our sack leaders, Malik King will be graduating. He will be missed. And Preston Kinney, man, I don't know what happened to him, but he kind of fell off since his freshman year. And he had a couple of good runs and a couple of good games, but for the most part, he was a non-factor for most of the last two, maybe even three years, which is pretty incredible. Now, looking at our interception leader, Brian Britt led us with four. Brenton Jackson and Odin Blue both had two of their own. Now, I think that, you know, looking at the future, DJ Durrell is a cornerback that we got to keep our eye on. I don't know what Bryant Britt is going to do. I don't know if he's going to declare or he's going to stay, but we'll have to see. I think DJ Durrell is a guy to keep your eye on, along with D. Roberto at cornerback as well. He's going to be a guy that really is going to make a difference for us. He has good man, good zone, and honestly, a year of training will help both of them. And who knows? They could both be starters. Who knows? And then Jacob Drackett, he will take over at strong safety more than likely. Ja'Cory Reed moving on. I think that the job is now Jacob Drackett's. Remember, he was a high school quarterback, so he can recognize plays really, really well. So now we move on to conference championship week, Georgia versus Texas A&M. I did not think that this would be the conference championship. I knew Texas A&M would probably make it after they beat us. And then they go on to win the SEC championship that triple option offense, just too much. Chance Tyree only threw the ball 10 times. I mean, that is just ridiculous. Ran for 93, two touchdowns. For Fernando was an All-American. He ran for 191 and two touchdowns. That's what you get out of that team. So then let's check out San Diego State. And they lose to Miami of Ohio. You have got to be kidding me. This is a team that literally is the number three team in the nation. And they lose to a 7-16. and 16. That is just ridiculous. Now let's just check out the number two team. East Gotham loses in the Big Ten Championship. So that means that San Diego State just lost to Miami. They would have been in the National Championship, led by Davis Lee. You've got to be kidding me. That is embarrassing, to be honest. So now we move on to bowl week, and it looks like we will be playing in a BCS bowl versus number five Vanderbilt. It's just funny how this game works sometimes. You demote Vanderbilt into the MAC, and then they still make a BCS bowl. In the SEC, they probably would have been probably the bottom two teams. That's just incredible. So we will play them. This is yet another year. I think one of you guys pointed this out last year that one plays two. Uh, three plays four, five plays six, seven plays eight, but actually nine plays 11. So it's not really nine plays 10, nine plays 11, and that's Alabama and Texas. That's going to be a good game. But yeah, like I said, three plays four, East Gotham and USC. It's pretty interesting. Metropolis at seven and five actually drops to play Central Michigan. So 
man, they actually had lost a grip on that season. I expect a big bounce back season, especially if Roy Toth comes back at running back. They're going to be a problem. So now we hop into our first BCS Bowl here on this channel and not on the channel in the series. And we play Vanderbilt two losses and you just look at what they do. They have a good rush defense, but you got to take into consideration that they were playing against the MAC conference and we removed all the good teams from the MAC. So they were playing against lesser competition. So I don't know how good this team is, but we still have to come with our best foot forward. We want to win. So can we stay undefeated in bowl games? Hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, hey, filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on...